What's up, Twaggers? I'm your host, Nakia Driver, and today I am here with Warren. Well, it's that time again. Brr, the season is approaching, and we all know what that means. Absolutely, Nakia. Staying warm indoors and eating those healthy comfort foods. Warren, those are two of my favorite things to do on a chilly fall day. GSU knows all about the importance of eating a well-balanced meal on campus. Dining is just now a fingertip away, so no need to be late for class waiting in those long lines for your burgers, pizza, or lattes. You can simply pre-order all of your food right through the convenient Eat Well on Campus app. It's simple, quick, and easy. If you need a dozen of eggs, muffins for breakfast, or fresh fruit and vegetables, the app is there for all of your grocery essentials from the GSU e-grocery section on the app. Download it and eat well on campus today and make your life a bit easier. Thanks for that information, Nakia. Now there are no excuses for me to raise your fridge. <laughs> I can get a food at the touch of a button. Don't you just love technology? Attention students, don't forget about the FAFSA completion workshop that the Department of Financial Aid will be hosting this Friday, October 20th from 3.30 to 4.30 p.m. in the cube room D2430. On a lighter note, GSU Student Life Department will present the Lip Sync Battle today, Wednesday, October 18th, 2017, in the Lakeside Lounge from 12 to 2. For more information or to sign up, contact Konya Sledge at ksledge at govst.edu. That sounds like fun. I can't wait to do my favorite Michael Jackson impression, Heal the World. <laughs> Speaking of healing, the GSU Department of Social Work and Generation Hope presents its fifth series forum for healing hope and restoration to bring awareness to the issues of mass incarceration. The forum is open to all and will take place on Monday, October 23rd in Ingberston Hall, room B1200. Please come and join in on the conversation and for a chance to be the author of your story. For more information, please contact Dr. Lori Glass at 708-536-4919 or lglass at govst.edu. That's definitely a conversation that I wouldn't mind adding my two cents in. Absolutely, Warren. It is a major issue in our society that's just only starting to gain mainstream. October is dedicated to many significant issues we face today, one of them being domestic violence. In observance of Domestic Violence Awareness Month, the Lambda Paeta and the Student Life Department will host an informational session with guest speaker Carrie Hill from South Suburban Family Shelter. Hill will explain ways to recognize the signs of domestic violence and what to do about it. Come join in on the conversation Wednesday, October 25th at Angberson Hall from 6 to 7 p.m. Contact Konya Sledge for information at ksledge at govst.edu. One of the best practices that I like to live by is there's always something to give. If you can't give your money, you can always give your time. With that said, GSU's Community Service Council will host a volunteer resource fair today, Wednesday, October 18th in the Hall of Governors. There will be a table set up for students to come sign up with different organizations in the surrounding communities to volunteer their time at one of the many organizations in exchange for credit. This event is to help combat worthy causes such as housing, hunger, literacy, and clothing. For more information, please contact Civic Engagement at govst.edu. Up next, we'll be taking a look at some of the GSU sports on campus. A Jaguar is fearless. It sees beyond the darkness and moves with silent contemplation. Through unknown places with confidence, it knows the path through chaos, shape-shifting through the hidden sun. And when the time comes, it reaches out and conquers all. GSU's golfer Kendall Ferris has teed off at the Shot Town Classics mm. and did an astronomical job representing GSU. You go, girl. She performed like a true champion and took her golf game to the next level. 
She finished with a two-day total of 194, shooting identical roundings of 97. Mm. This was a very competitive field, and not to mention, she has never played this course before. Congratulations, Kendall. Things didn't go so swell for the GSU's women's volleyball team during last Tuesday's game. They faced St. Fr Francis, and St. Francis dominated GSU on their home court. The GSU offense finished up with a negative hitting percentage of negative .34 as the team committed 20 unforced errors against 17 kills on a whooping 87 attempts. Ashley Pickard, also known as Big Red, finished with eight kills this game. Compared to the fight in the Saints with a .312 hit between four different players recording five kills or more, this game was not one of GSU's strongest. The Jaguars did not give their very best efforts to win against the Fighting Saints. Are you ready for the basketball season, Warren? Basketball? It's that time already? Jeez, time is flying. Man, this year is almost over. Yes, it is. Be sure to come and support our women's basketball scrimmage this Thursday, October 19th. GSU will face Moraine Valley in the GSU's gymnasium. All are welcome, so make sure to pop in and support our women's basketball team. In other news, our reporters covered a helpful event for freshmen to attend on GSU's campus. Here's what some of the students had to say. Receiving financial aid and registering for classes to locating different resources around campus, being a freshman can be very difficult on a student trying to find a way to adapt to the daily GSU campus life. Stop by Freshman Real Talk Part 2 on Wednesday, October 18th from 6 to 8 p.m. located in GSU E-Lounge. This event is designed to help freshmen openly discuss their transition from high school and what the experience of their first semester at GSU has been like so far. During the event, there will be new student program peer mentors who will share helpful tips and tricks with freshmen on how to properly handle and recover from midterms. We interviewed a GSU freshman to tell us how this event benefited and helped them to succeed in their first college semester. It is very helpful for the new freshmen and new students in general to have uh, events like this because it actually helps them networking. You know what everybody says, college is all about networking. We also caught up with Rashonda Ross, the director of New Student Programs and Leadership Development Initiatives, to see exactly why these types of programs are helpful to new college students. Students, especially freshmen, they need a safe environment to say whatever is on their mind and to ask their peers what's really going on without the pressure of having, you know, old lady me <laughs> or any other faculty or staff in the room. So again, it's just a nice safe space where they can really vent and get to know about their university, their environment, without the pressure of having to filter what they say. So the peer mentors are going to give some of their expertise and say, look, this is how you survive midterms. If you don't do well on midterms, this is how you bounce back. You know, you don't have to let these first few weeks of school define you as a student, and this is how we've survived, so let us tell you how to do that. So the peer mentors will help them with all, just a big wide range of issues. Becoming a freshman to a new campus can be intimidating for many students, but knowing the right resources can always help you out. For any questions or more information, please contact New Student Programs at fye at govst.edu. Nice to know that freshmen have a place to go to talk to about your experience here on GSU. Up next, we'll be taking a look at the art events going on around campus. Don't judge me. You are not without sin. I am not what you say I am. I own my identity. If you've ever felt labeled, Nathaniel Hawthorne's classic play, The Scarlet Letter, is for you, for now, for the world we live in today. We have all worn the A. We have all been Hester. This is a new play inspired by an old story. At the heart of the play are life's struggles, judgment and freedom, desire and sin, the head and the heart. Our adaptation is about empowering people who have been labeled by others to reclaim and own their own identity. What's up, Swaggers? On Wednesday, October 11th, there was an art walk that took place on campus. 
Students had, students had the opportunity to admire different art pieces and converse with the artists about their work. Most of the exhibits run from October 11th till October 21st. Here's a look into the exhibits. We even caught up with one of the featured artists to get some insight into his, one of his pieces. On October 11th, there was an art walk that took place on GSU's campus. This walk featured many different artists and their exhibits throughout the school. The GSU Skylight and Visual Arts Gallery hold beautiful works of art such as paintings, sculptures, and photography. We were lucky enough to catch up with one of the featured artists to gain some insight into his creative pieces and the inspiration surrounding them. The world is definitely my inspiration and more um, to kind of hone in on exactly what it's like. The transitions, the period, the growing, pain, sadness. Um, the whole process of just like living and just learning. That's, that's directly what I've been learning from pretty much from day one. Just always be yourself, always create, just always create and always have fun. Like when you make your art, have fun, create and, and, and stand for it and stand in what you believe in when you create. Whether that's like you want to paint red dots on a piece of paper and you believe in it and you really do, then paint red dots on a piece of paper, you know what I mean? But don't be closed minded as well. Like I, I, I found that as me growing as an artist, like I've always been like sheltering my mind because I never wanted to indirectly take from another artist. But it's like as I get more and more deeper into the um, the art world, more and more people are trying to compare my work to somebody, and then I'm like, I don't know who that person is. And then I gotta go back and do the, the homework to figure out like who is this person. So it's like don't be afraid to like learn from other artists because like somebody was like when I first started creating, that's how I learned who John Michelle Basquiat was because someone was like. That's like Basquiat, you're doing crowns and stuff. And I'm like, who, like, who, who's this person that keeps saying? With this crazy name, and I got a crazy name. And I'm like, I look him up and I'm like, wow, like, like this is what I'm doing. And this is what he did. It's, it's a little bit different, but it's like, I'm in the same room as this and I've never seen him before. So it's like indirectly somehow, I, I got that same energy from the world. So it's like, I might as well just get into it now versus like it come back to me and I got to figure out who he is. So just always just growing, just growing, having fun. That's what I would tell you guys, and don't quit. Just never quit. Create. There were many other featured artists in the art walk, such as Javier Shavira, Jonathan Casaria, and Raul Ortiz. Later that same night, artists Javier and Jonathan held a discussion in the Visual Arts Gallery. They spoke to an audience about some of their up-and-coming works, techniques, and various pieces throughout their exhibit. This exhibit will be held on campus until December 6th, so feel free to stop in the GSU Skylight and Visual Arts Gallery to support these wonderful artists and check out some of their awesome creations. Wow, those were some excellent pieces. These pieces can be found in the Skylight Gallery here in library, as well as the Visual Arts Gallery located in E1580. I'm personally looking forward to paying a visit to the art gallery myself. In other news, to honor LGBTQ Month, on Saturday, October 21st at 8 p.m., Impact and the Center for Performing Arts presents Starting Over. Starting Over is a play written by Shepsu Aku. This is a story about young lovers from an intolerant small town that reunite years later in a major city. Their difficult past must be reconciled with an even more difficult present. According to the writer, it was written to highlight love, tolerance, race, and acceptance of the transgender relationships. Tickets are $28. A postdoc discussion will with the playwright and cast will follow the performance. Pizza will be provided for all GSU student attendees starting at 7 p.m. in the CPA inner lobby. So come out and support this great show. In similar news, the Center for Performing Arts will be soon kick off its production of The Scarlet Letter. The Scarlet Letter is a show written by Sarah Saltwick based on the novel by Nathaniel Hawthorne. It's about a woman named Hester Prynne. After assuming her husband died at sea, Hester had a child out of wedlock and is punished by the people in her town by being forced to wear a scarlet letter A on her chest. The A represented adultery. She learned to wear the A with confidence and it ultimately ended up being represented as a symbol of power. GSU students are working hard to prepare for the show. Practices have already started and the cast are gearing up for their debut performance on Saturday, November 4th at 8 p.m as well as Sunday, November 5th at 2 p.m. Tickets are on sale now, $10 for students and $15 for everyone else. You can purchase them through the Center for Performing Arts page on GSU's website or directly at the box office here on campus. Up next, I'll be sitting down with Ned Laff from the Center for Junior Year. 
We'll be right back after this short break. everyone. Today we are joined by our guest, Ned Lapp, who is the director of the Center for the Junior Year. How are you doing today, Ned? I'm doing great. How's it going, Brooke? I'm good. I'm good. That's good to hear. <laughs> we brought you in today to talk more about the Center for the Junior Year. Can you tell us a little more about it? Yeah, the Center for the Junior Year is an office unlike any other office that you'll find on any college campus. It's a place where any student can come in and talk about their dream, their purpose, the thing that they really care about, that thing that they normally wouldn't tell anybody, so we can help them craft an education that brings together their general education, their major elective courses, leadership opportunities, experiential learning, into a program that fits their own personal and professional interests. Wow, that sounds like a lot, and that sounds really interesting. Well, what are some of the specific services offered to the students at the center? One of the things that the center is very good at is helping students figure out what it is that they want to do. So it's not unusual to have students come in and they'll be in a major, but they can't really explain it, or they have some sort of idea, but it doesn't sound real to them. So uh, we help them translate that into academic learning opportunities. The other thing we do is we help students access what we call the hidden job market. Most of the time the hidden job market is right in front of you, but most students never see it. So we can hook students into really interesting internships. So related to TAG, uh, TWAG, we help the student land internships in Chicago with the Casting Society of America that was doing all the, all the shows, the Chicago Med, Chicago Fire, Chicago PD, oh, wow. all those shows, and that ended up helping her land something in LA. So what we do is basically tell students, if you can dream it, we can tell you how to make it into practical reality. Wow, that's, that's really exciting. What does a typical meeting look like? There is no real typical meeting, but we have a standard practice that we do. The first thing we want to do is disarm students. We want them to relax and realize that they're in a safe place where they can literally talk about anything that they're interested in, what their real concerns are. And then what we help them do is talk about those things that they care about, that thing that they would commit to, that they would shut all the noise out of their life and actually want to do. Once we have that in place, we help them do an asset map, we help them plan out an academic program, we connect them with resources in the city of Chicago. Because the beautiful thing about where we live is there's nothing you can imagine that isn't being done in the city of Chicago. And then we help them put together the academic pieces so they can graduate on time. And whether they're going for a job or going for a grad, um, graduate degree or professional school, we help them find the path that works for them. Wow, your future is really important. It's very, very important. Well, how can the center help students that are not in their junior year? The center is open for all students. So we see first year students, sophomores, we even have graduate students coming in asking for help on how they can prepare for the job market. And so anyone can walk through the door. Mm -hmm. Well, what is the one piece of advice that you think all students need to hear? The first thing, well, there's actually two pieces. Mm -hmm. Believe in that thing that you care about. We find most of the time in the center that students will come to college, and this is normal to students across the country. 
They'll come to school, they'll pick a major believing that if they follow a certain type of career planned out map, that that'll take them to where they want to go. Instead of finding that purpose in themselves and crafting their education around that. And the second piece of advice is walk through the door. <laughs> Every student who's come into the center has been completely surprised by the experience that they've had. Oh, yeah, definitely. I know I have. Is the center for junior year hosting any upcoming events, tutorials, or seminars? We have finished our last event for the fall, but we will be putting together two or three events um, in the spring. They'll probably be in the Lakeside Lounge, and they will involve food. Oh, yes. Oh, food. It's one thing I know I love. Um, do you hire upperclassmen for mentors for younger students? If so, what criteria do you have, and how can students get involved? We do hire students for peer mentors. Um, they have to go through training with us to learn a model that we call interactive, interactive appreciative mentoring. Um, what we look for in, in anyone who wants to come in is a genuine commitment to want to learn, to want to explore, and to want to help other students. Oh, wow. Yeah, oh, that's great. That's a wonderful thing. Um, how can students make an appointment to come and visit you? They can either walk in the door, because <laughs> we'll we, we will drop everything whenever ever a student walks in the door, or they can contact us. Um, they can contact us at my email at uh, nlaf at gov.st.edu, and we do get back to them immediately. We don't let students hang. Laugh. Or they can call the office, oh, yeah. and the office is 708-235-2856. LAFF is an L-A-U-G-H? No, LAFF is an L-A-F-F. -F. Oh, just, just making sure, just right. making sure. Um, do you have anything else you'd like to add about it? Yes. <laughs> GSU is an absolutely interesting university if you engage it. You can go from here, it's easy to say anywhere, but in fact, we have students who are going to the University of Chicago, going to the University of California at San Diego. We have students who are working in neurosciences at the Grossman wow. Institute. We have all these opportunities that we can help students engage, and there is nothing a student can imagine that we can't help them do. Wow, that's, that's super exciting. I know I'd like to stop in pretty soon myself. Well, that about wraps up the show for this morning. Thanks for me, the rest of the crew, and thanks, Ned Laugh, for being here. Thank you. Join us again. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Join us again next week. And from everyone here at GSU Studio B in University Park, you've just been twagged. <laughs>